Hey guys, welcome to another video of making a full step shopping website tutorial series. If you have not joined this playlist yet, please feel free to join the playlist because this is going to be a complete shopping website tutorial series. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, hit that subscribe button, click the bell icon, turn on the notification for all of my videos, like this video, share this video, comment down below how you are enjoying the series and anything you want to share with me. Like what type of video should I upload in the future. With that being said, let's get started in this video. So this video is uh, part 8 of the series and today we're going to set up our backend uh, structure, the models, we're going to create a few models, a few uh, validation for the IDE. So basically this is just going to be for the adding the products. And now let's get started. We will structure our backend actually. We will open our Visual Studio code. And as we imagine, this is how we can see it. Okay, control plus. Yeah, we can just close it and hold control plus uh, back ticks and it will open it back again. So we can just close it for now. Alrighty. Let's hide this one. Let's go to server folder. And in here we have only the index index.js for now. We will create a few folders. First folder we will create is going to be with the name of controllers. Click back on the server folder. Create another folder with the name of validation. We're going to put our joy validators in there. Create another folder with the name of models. The, the here we're going to uh, actually make our uh, MongoDB models. So first of all, we want to make a MongoDB model. Like I told you before, model is just like, a, you know, you're making a box, you're labeling the box something. And then you're having a structure for the box. You're saying what type of uh, items can you put in the box. The box is uh, plastic, so you cannot put everything, anything you want. There is some limitations, something like that. So we will create a new model for, we'll say it as, mm, products.js. Here, we need to first of all import our Mongo's, uh, okay, let's say constant, Mongo's is equal to require, import Mongo's, okay. We need to actually get mongoose.schema. So you can say mongoose.schema right there. Alrighty. So now we already imported as the mongoose.schema. You can name this one as a schema directly. Now what we can do, we can say, we can create a new function that will export. Well, this is an arrow function, we cannot export arrow functions as default. Because arrow functions are just variable that are connected with some function. So uh, you can just import as default the normal functions because they are just a function in itself. They are not like some variables, something like that. So you can just say constant. I will make an arrow function because it, it looks a little bit more clean. I will say constant product schema. Schema is equal to. Schema, we will make a new schema. So this is just like mongoose.schema. In here, we need to first, we need to put our name, like, you know, the name of the things that we want, uh, what products should hold. So we'll say product should have a title, which by default should be of type string. And, uh, it should be of type string and one thing, one second. All right, it should be of type string. It is required. True. Title should be unique. No. So we will not be putting the title as a unique because multiple products can have same title, but they can have different properties, like different colors, stuff like that, right? That's about the title. Then we will have a description. Type should be string. Required is true. Or we can put something as default. Okay. So we'll just say let it be required. 
then we'll have QTY means quantity to be of number it is not going to be required because we'll take as default one we'll say if someone is adding a product he at least has one product as a default or he can just specify how many products he has okay how much is the quantity so price is also going to be of type number and is required is going to be true because he needs to specify the price then we have color it's going to be of type string and the required is going to be true then we will have the size it's going to be of type string required is going to be true okay we got a few things we need to add a few more things we need a slug it's going to be type of string required is going to be true unique is going to be true so what actually is a slug slug is a URL of the product so all of the products should have a unique URL right because if few products have same URL then there is going to be a lot of confusions like you're going to go to a URL you will see some errors like oh yeah this is a one product image this is other that another product uh, title another product price so there's will be a lot of confusion if that thing happened okay and we will have an image of type string required is called to true we should give an image as default right and then we need to have a, a category option type is a string it is it should be required because we can assume it is of type this of type that or type that so we are just saying yeah it is required we will later on see what it actually is okay and at the end we need to say module dot export is equal to okay let me just say here mongoose dot schema now why did I say this because I need to import it as mongoose dot model with the name of maybe like products and uh, the schema is going to be product schema and we'll say time lapse timestamp should be true we want the timestamps to be recorded right okay so that's it all we have to do to set up our models for the product part right well yeah that was it that was it for this video actually we don't need any joy validation for this one because for now we'll just say yeah yeah we actually might need a joy validation but no that would be just be, be a lot more complicated we will not be creating any admin panel for now okay maybe in the future if there was a lot of support we will create admin panel as a bonus thing otherwise i would say this one is pretty okay we can use apis to actually you know add items to our store so in the next video we are actually going to set up a backend api to actually add items to our mongodb database and in the video after that one we will actually you know show that we will actually we will actually do what we will need to actually i know use an algorithm that will sort all of the items based on the title name so yeah it's going to be a lot more fun as you may not expect it to be well i will see you in the next one have a good day